Whoops. Hello. Can you hear my uh, hey hey there. I think you're on mute. Hi. Hey, well, is your is your name pronounced Joey or I don't want to like say Yeah, it's <laughs> Joey. Okay. All right. So yeah, no, it's a little like short notice, but uh, do you, you want to just like maybe go over your problems? I, I have something here, but. Um, maybe yeah, it's better. Um, maybe not sure. yeah, I don't know if I have like that many like specific questions, just kind of like the whole concept of um, the gas like stoichiometry and okay. then the like partial pressure stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have, do you have like problems? I know your quiz is tomorrow, but did, did you, did your professor give you guys like problems? To work yeah. With? Like we had a homework assignment that was like 20 questions. Okay, that's good. Um, is is it like a PDF? It's not. It's on Canvas, so it's like, it's like. Oh, it's on, it, it, it's on. So it's it is online. Can you share it? Um, I can try. Let's, Let's see. see. Okay, so like. Okay. I just don't want to like give you like a black box, and I'm like. Oh okay, yeah. No. I don't want it to be. I mean, I know it's gonna be general. It's it's general chemistry, or what chemistry is it? Um. Yeah. General. Okay. Okay. Should I share my screen? Maybe? Yeah, go ahead. I think I already tried. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. okay, so whoa, hang on. So this is the homework and I just I did it with my friend who like knew how to do it, but she okay. couldn't really explain it to me. <laughs> so Okay. I have so, all the right answers. I just don't I don't know how to do them. Okay, so let me let me just read it first. You have the same. So it's kind of this. This one's kind of qualitative, um, but the H two has twice. The, so you're just pretty much messing. Like a lot of these problems are just messing with the ideal gas law. Like a lot of the relationships. Mm -hmm. and, Wait, maybe I, I know how to do this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, See, you know this. One, I right? get a little confused between so number density is m moles per liter, right? Yeah. And then mass density, I don't understand fully. So like mass density, let me see. Mm -hmm. this, this one is a little bit, you know how like you have the N equals M over the molecular weight? I'm thinking it's like the mole times, so th there's like some difference in um, terminology here. But uh, I'm thinking the, um, the, is the mass density, uh, it, it's probably the number of moles times mm -hmm. like the molecular mass. Okay, that's probably it, yeah. Um, I have it somewhere here. Yeah, let me, let me just look at it. Cause like, I know a lot of terms are like, I mean, they're, they're generally similar, like the equation is similar, but let me just yeah. look it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. It should just be like mass. If it's just mass density, the the mm -hmm. way I'm looking at it is, it's probably, isn't it just like mass, the mass of the material or like the molecule divided by the volume of it? So that's so like the one of the problems that they were using with like mass density was like the balloons, and it was okay. like um, it was like the the parts where it was hard. Like some of them you could just tell because obviously if they have a higher mass and they're the same amount of like liters and that one's volume crazy. so like the, the leaders will be the volume yeah okay yeah if they have the same if the two balloons have the same volume and one has a greater mass that mass density is going to be bigger but 
the ones that were confusing it's like if they're two different if they're two different elements okay. like this one was f2 and cl2 okay and they were also at different leaders Dif so different maybe, no. different volume and then different mass right you said yeah so what and then what's the question or, uh well well there are different mass because they're different elements so you yeah have molar masses yeah yeah, so like if you have a different volume, different mass, uh -huh. different elements, then your mass set is different. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's technically what it is. Yeah, it's just um like knowing. Uh, I think if you for your quiz, um, if you have a lot of because like I I, I kind of tutored kind of similarly, like along these lines. Like well, I don't like I was just telling the the student like I don't like exams where they test you for your qualitative skill. You know, huh? like. It should just be like, you know, have the equation and then apply it. But it seems like th these questions, like this first one right here, looks like it's like a qu very qualitative one, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then my, my, my hint there, or advice is to, uh, to attack it would be like, just know your ideal gas law. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then like having different, like for this one, it says twice the volume. And then, you know, like if you have like H, uh, you know, like element one, and, and then element two, like make make the volume equals twice the volume. So it's just pretty much tracking it. And then when, once you're comparing yeah, them, yeah. just plug them in in the ideal gas law and then compare it. It's it's just really tracking and then getting and plugging that relationship in the ideal, ideal gas law. Does that make sense? Okay, though? I think I'm good with that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that one I knew how to do. I just yeah. Okay. Um, what's the next one? This oh, one. this one's about mass density. Oh, shoot. It says my connection. Okay. So, which has a higher mass density? So, mass density, pretty much, yeah. It's, it's just mass regular divided by volume. And then a sample has like O2, right? That's the first sample. That's one. Yeah, I always do like. Wait, so like, the, hang on. Hang on. The higher mass density of sample O2. So the, okay, so the O2 is a volume of 10. Yep. And this, what? I think it's like cutting out. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, like, I, I, I was just, I thought you were talking to someone in the background. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, like for this one, it's asking, it's giving you like two volumes, right? Mm hmm So, and then it's asking you the main question. So what you have are two volumes and then you want to ask like, okay, which one has the higher mass density? So mm -hmm. which one, is it row one or row two? Same temperature and then same pressure. Wait, right? wait did you say row one or row two? Yeah, and then that's what, it, that's what you're trying to compare row one and row two because mass density oh uh, okay, okay so mass density is like technically it's like row row which is like mass over volume right uh -huh. so it Wait, gives you two, it gives you two volumes right it gives you two volumes. yeah so do you use the molar mass um for for this one yeah no, you would use just the the mass here because this is grams yeah. But you so, don't know how many grams there are. Uh, in, in order for you to, so you know how like the ideal gas law. Um, I'm oh, thinking, you have to do the ideal gas law? You always have to use the ideal gas law in terms of like, if it gives you like an element. As ideal gas law, you can use either in terms of mass or in terms of mole, right? Uh -huh. But for the ideal gas law, you know, um, the temperature and the pressure are the same. And then you know the volume, you don't know the number of moles, I guess you know R, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so what I would do here is like, you, you know how like, um, you have the PV equals MRT, like M as yeah. the mass, not the mole, don't use the mole for this one. Um, and then what I would do is like, just what isolate, you, use? you would isolate the M, just isolate the M. So like you have M M, M, M as in mole, sorry. So like M as in mass. Where's like the M? M would be your mass. 
like the grams. Yeah, but there's no M in that equation. If there isn't one, but then you're trying to compare them, right? You're, you're gonna, so you have PV mm -hmm. divided by RT, right? So M equals PV over RT? Yeah, so M1, so that's what you wanna do, because you have the same volume, yeah, not the same volume, yeah, you have volume one, volume two, uh -huh. but then now, now you're trying to get M1, M2, right? So that you can get your mass density. So do you cross out pressure, um, temperature, and, then, and R? Yep, yeah, and it says and the same, it it same temperature, same pressure, yeah. Would it be like M1, V1? So it would just be V over R. I mean, R obviously is the same. It, it would just be M equals V1, right? And then, and then so yeah, now you then, plug in the V1. That. So it would be M equals... So the first V is 10. Yeah. So the mass is 10? Uh, you, you, I think you divide it by, um, by R. Oh. And then which one do you get? Like, so you have the, uh, let me see. It's telling you here that, the, so the CL2 is the one with the, with the higher mass. Let, let me Wait, just see. For the CL2 has the higher mass? It yeah. doesn't say that. It says it's correct, right? Oh, well, that's, yeah, they're telling me the answer there. Yeah. But I wasn't given that before. I would just attack it that way. Does, does it make sense, though? Like, um, it's just, like, the relationship. And then well, M, which is the ideal gas law, and then you plug that back to, like, mass density. Yeah. And then sometimes it doesn't give you everything. Like, it gives you something super arbitrary here. Like, same temperature, same pressure. So that you can cancel those, right? Mm hmm And then w once you cancel that, it's, it's good to write it down. Um, yeah. And then, so I would say like, maybe, let me see. And once you have like M1 equals V1 over R and M2 equals V2 over R, then you plug that back in. What did you get for this one? Or what was your thought process, I guess? So then it would be, hang on. Um, the V2 is three, three divided by 0.08. would be 36. And then the other one would be 10 divided by, be 121. That wasn't just, right, though. Let me just read this. As the mass of CO2 is more than twice as large. This last sentence is like weird. As the mass of CO2 is more than twice as large as O2, the mass density, so the mass of CO2 is more than twice as large as O2. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So, like, You, you would just compare the maybe three. The mass of is more than twice as large as O2. I'm always thinking like it's molar mass. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because then like, they're, they're actually getting to ask the mass. Of, yeah, because then CL2, if you go back, because the O2 would just be like 32. So then would you just find the number of moles and then multiply that by the molar mass? To get the, yeah. For each. To get the mass, to get the mass, yeah. Yeah, and then you just compare um, the two. Yeah, it, the way I'm, like, you know, the, the way I'm thinking about this, like, if there's like, if that doesn't work, like go with that first thought. If that doesn't work, mm -hmm. go with what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So go, go with that because I that would be that would be the easiest route. Yeah. Compare those two masses and then molar, you know, molar, molar, molecular. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this one this one doesn't really specify. That's why maybe that's the confusing part. But yeah. Okay. okay. Um, this one I tried and I did it wrong somehow. Okay. Let me let me just read it first. Uh, 
Volume up here, blah, 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 is for complete report area. So what volume? Okay, okay. So this one is kind of like, this is like a gas stoichiometry. This is what this is, I think. Because then like, you're pretty much given, in a lot of these, like, you're given like the, um, the reaction. Uh -huh. And then like, this, this is like the, the most general like, system. You're given a reaction and then you have to find, you have to use the ideal gas law to find any of the parameters that's not given to. That's like the, it's always the case, like to keep it general. But like for this one, um, what part didn't you get? Like all of it. I just didn't even know like where to start or anything. Okay. So uh, looking at this problem, like what I would do first, it's always a two-stepper. Like he, mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, let me ask, do you do know how to like balance, right? Like if, if it's not given to you, I think that was like the, like one of the beginning parts. In yeah, chemistry. you balance it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so knowing that, so it's given to you, if it wasn't, you'd balance it. So you can skip that step. And then mm -hmm. this, the, so the first step then is finding the moles. It's always the first step. From, and, it, and how you do that is you just look at the, the, the balance equation, right? Hang on, I'm gonna write down the steps. Okay. Um, okay, so first balance. First balance, yeah, it's always the case, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then find the number of moles. Yeah, depending on it's, like what it's asking. It, it, it's usually like finding the moles, like yeah, but then what are you, what, what are you trying to find? Uh, that depends on the problem. Mm -hmm. and this, this one is telling you, it's always like, you have the reactants and then you have the products. It's, it's always that, like, it wants you to convert it from, from products, I mean, from reactants to products, which is like this, right? It's asking convert moles of Ag2O into moles of O2. Mm -hmm. So that relationship, because you have like the, the chemical balance equation, you already have that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so the two and then one. And so that's what you do. Like, and then the, the 0.5 and the 0.25. Do you know how they got that one? Well, the 0.5 is the moles of AG2O. But then... I see that's given to yeah. The 0.25, yeah, is the one that you're trying to find, yeah. Yeah. And then you find that by doing, like, the mole ratio. Yeah. The, fir the very first thing, like, probably the hardest part of this is, like, finding the moles, like, when, why do you do that? It's pretty much that, that's just, you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. but, it's like after you have the moles of O2, you just plug and chug. But sometimes like, what if, like if they both had a one coefficient or like no coefficient. Okay. Then like what, that doesn't really help if it's one to one, you know? Uh, let me think, let me think. Um, it's, if it's one to one, then it would just equal each other, right? Like the number of moles. Yeah. 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 Like, and I it, because it, it, like it, it's all depending on the relationship, you know, on your chemical mm -hmm. balance. It, I would say like it's actually easy because <laughs> it's it's pretty much just like you know it's the same thing, and then you just plug it in. You just, you can just say maybe that can be like a qualitative answer. Mm -hmm. Like oh, is the volume the same or is the volume higher? You know, so stuff like that. So then you do, you plug in the number of moles to PV equals NRT. So you have one atom they told us times the volume. You don't know that. You don't know that. And one, then right? equals the 0.25 moles times the R times T. Yeah. Sometimes, just, sometimes, sometimes, easy. sometimes uh, this one atmosphere or ATM, they can give this to you like STP. And mm -hmm. then maybe you have to like, oh, what the hell is that? So <laughs> just put like, they won't give you it's one, but if they say standard, then you know it's one. Yeah. Um, what about like, I mean, I'm, I don't know if you would know this because it might be like specific to my professor. Okay. But like sometimes they'll give it to you in like bar or like they'll give okay. you the grams and like kilograms. And I never know if I'm like supposed, because I feel like we're supposed to use like ATM and grams and certain units, but they okay. don't really specify when you're supposed to. Like sometimes they specify, I guess, when you're supposed to convert it and sometimes they don't. 
Oh, okay. If you, I really hate it when they give it to you in bars, like something that, you know, yeah. I, I, I always see it in like ATM or like uh, mm -hmm. something like new tunes, whatever. I, this is when you're doing yeah. it later on. But I would just say like, keep it consistent. Um, okay. What, it's always, it's going to ask you, but then maybe if it doesn't tell you what the final like, unit is or are, uh, just ask your professor, like, you know, like, what do you, how do you want this to be in the end? You know, how, what's the display or the final unit you want us to have? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel like they always specify one way or the other. Like they would say, um, like if they gave it in kilograms, I know sometimes they've said, like, give the answer in grams. Yeah. So, yeah. As, long, as long as you're, um, yeah, if you ask that question, it's easy. And if not, like, I always like keep it standard. Um, like for, for kilo, if I'm working with kilograms, like if the problem is given in grams, then don't mm -hmm. convert it. Always will go yeah. over it. Stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's the next one. So I'm going to try Here's, to not look at the answer. Um, if the reaction is carried out at constant, Avogadro's principle. This this is the one with um, V is N, right? V is like related to N, the number of moles or like volume. V is? Let me see, because I know there's like Boyle's, Charles, and Avogadro, right? Oh, yeah. Avogadro's is like 6.02. Yeah. Okay. I meant like the relationship, like like if you're trying to... I don't know that. Okay. Um, wait, so you guys didn't cover that one? I mean, we might have. I just, I'm confused. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, let, let me just read this problem first uh, okay. and see, like, if we even have to do that. Uh, yeah, this is the one, Avogadro's principle. Because Avogadro's principle tells us if pressure and temperature remain constant, volume is proportional to the, to N. V is proportional to N, number of moles of gas. I think that's what it's telling you. The, wait, V... Volume, the, yeah. the volume, okay. Is proportional to N, the number of moles. Uh -huh. So like, that's always the case with Avogadro. Okay, so. The one, the one thing is though, like, how do you know when, when to use it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They just it, set it in the answer there, which makes no sense. Yeah. See, like. Let me see, if the reaction is carried out, it's like the assumptions in, in like Avogadro and then the other ones. It's like keywords that you have to look, let me see. Oh, it tells you, it tells it to you. If the reaction is carried out at constant temperature and pressure, uh -huh. that means it's Avogadro. Because it, says, it con says yeah, constant temperature and pressure? Yeah, that's Avogadro. I, guess I, I might as well just give that one because when, um, you know how like you have Boyles, Charles and Avogadro, right? Uh huh. And in Avogadro, it, it gives you a relationship between like the number of moles n and the volume v. Okay. So, so it gives you the the number uh, that relationship. You're, you're you're always assuming since there's a relationship between v and n, you're always assuming that everything else is constant. So r is always constant, right? Obviously. Mm hmm. So that means everything else is constant. It's not always the okay, case, like p and and t. P and, P and T will be constant since you have a relationship between V and N. So then um, that means like if one goes up, the other goes up? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like directly proportional, yeah. Yeah. Wait, but I don't really see how that helps. Because <laughs> then, like, what is that? Okay. So b before, I, before I cover that one, like, um, let, let's just get, like, the, the three relation relationships because, like, I think okay. it's very important, like, if you have them, like, what to look for. Like, for, okay. for this one, like, how do you know you're applying Avogadro? The, the reason why is because it says constant temperature and pressure. Right. I and got then, that now. I wrote that one. And then for Charles, Charles will tell you something different. Um, since Charles tells you volume is proportional to temperature, uh, okay, so I guess uh, what, what do you think would be constant then? If V and T are, are you know relatable, um, the pressure so, and the moles and the R. Exactly. Okay. So pressure and then so that's the if it says um, pressure and wait pressure and moles. 
Yeah. And, and then I feel like it would you, never say that. The, like, to, the pressure and the number. He has to tell you, he has to tell you something. Uh, like for, for this one, Avogadro's one, it has to tell you that it's either apply Avogadro or don't apply, or, you know, pr constant pressure or temperature. So here they said at a constant temperature and pressure, but I don't like remember it ever saying um, like the, like that it's a constant pressure and, and number of moles. For N? Yeah. Okay. I feel like yeah, they, they either have to, let me, let me go back to this one. For the most part, it'll never tell you it's like that law that's like. What? They'll never tell you that it's that law, like Charles, Boyles, or Avogadro. No, I know, but I don't know how I would know to use, like, that volume is proportional to temperature if they don't say that pressure and moles are are constant. Okay. So... Like, I wouldn't know to use that. I also don't know how to use that. I don't, like, I understand that it's proportional, but that doesn't give me any numbers or anything. Like, I don't, I still don't get how they solve that equation. Okay, we'll, we'll go to that one next. The one thing is though, like, so um, before that, it's actually just constant pressure for Charles and then constant temperature for Boyles. Oh, just yeah. constant pressure for Charles? Yeah, the, mo the moles is gonna change because you, the, cause you yeah, have Yeah, that's why I was confused. Yeah. Okay, so I'm then. Go going back to that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, hang on. So okay. the cons, so, oh, so then for Avogadro, it's just the temperature? Avogadro is both uh, constant pressure and temperature. Oh. For Charles, it's constant pressure. Okay. Okay. And, and, and then, and then for boils, the last one. Uh huh. You have like an indirect relationship, so it's like V, is like one. It's a it's one over P, whatever the, you know the alpha thing. V, v equals alpha. one over P. Yeah, alpha. It's like a relationship thing. Yeah, is that the only one? And then temperature is constant for boils. I'm pretty sure you've seen that okay. one before, right? Yeah. I think okay. So. Okay, good. All right, so now, now let's actually attack, like, how, how the heck do you use these ones? So, mm -hmm. uh, so what, once you have that, right, like, what, once you know what law to use. Yeah. You, you, have, you have a relationship between them, like, for this one. Let me just see. So we can use the chemical equation to relate the volume of gases instead of moles. Yeah, so you know how like you have three to one? Yeah. And then like, look at like the equation again. So the, the equation, the reactance gives you three, right? And then you get mm -hmm. back out. Or no, like one. three and then one. Or three to two. Three, one. It's, it's actually just the reactance here. I don't know. It's, yeah, that's what I get messed up on too. Is like, how do you know if you're supposed to use a reactant and a product or just the two reactants? Okay, okay. It, it'll ask you. Like, it, it'll tell you exactly like what it wants you to do. <laughs> in like, it doesn't problem. really though. No, like how much H two is required to react with N two, right? Right. Yeah, I see that. I just wouldn't know that it's not like I wouldn't know to pick three and one. Like I know those came from the balance equation, but I wouldn't know not to use two. You wouldn't sense. use you, you wouldn't use two because it's it's not giving you N H three or it, it's not giving you that. Like it only wants you, because like the balance equation, yeah, yeah, it's like an equal this equal that, but then it's also it's also just a relationship. Not only like reactants and products, it, it's like relationship throughout. You know what I mean? Like, it, like mm -hmm. e e even reactants being added or like two parts of like a product, th there's still a relationship between those two. It's, it's not just a relationship between like a reactant and a product. Okay. And then, you, so yeah, it can mess with you like that. It's not, um, you, you just have to, like once you have that balance, because you just read it off, right? Like you have three hydrogen gas and then nit nit nitrogen gas, right? You, you have three and one. But anyways, like no, knowing the number of moles, uh, be because of Avogadro's principle, you can directly just like relate it back to volume. If that, right? Because of that. Mm -hmm. Like, so you have that ratio 
and then you, you just I mean it's just yeah you just it's just algebra you just solve for what you don't have. Mm -hmm. does, does that make sense? Yeah, I just feel like I wouldn't know like if I saw that problem on the quiz, I wouldn't like know like now I know I guess where to start, but like I feel like I always just get stuck, and I okay. can't like finish these ones. Are they how are these time like how how much time you guys do you guys have for your? You have seventy five minutes, and it's for like I think there's like. 15 questions but i don't know how many of this kind there will be because it's over the whole unit oh man that's like that's like five minutes per problem yeah. you know? <laughs> um okay best my my is this your first one or do you guys have like a we, we had have... like we had a quiz on like the first few modules and then we had a quiz on the second few modules and now they're like now it's like cumulative of all of them okay that's fine uh so now it's a cumulative one. This one's like everything. And, and the new information. Like I haven't been quizzed on this information yet. Okay, so that's fine. I, I would, I would say like not. You're you're gonna be, like the my my best thing is you've been studying right like the other parts already. Yeah. Okay. Like I feel I probably, good about the rest of it. I probably focus on like these ones, the ones you haven't had anything yet. Mm -hmm. But like in order to attack it, like that's why because um it makes sense. So you you, had, you didn't have a quiz on it yet. Mm -hmm. But the, my best thing is these ones aren't that bad. It, it, my, the one thing is um, like looking at this problem, for example, uh, I, I would just do more of these. I, I don't know. Do you, you guys There's have a like, time? Yeah, I you think know? that one's easier though. Like then they get more complex. So like I okay. think that I, yeah. Okay. I would just say like find some, find some like, problems similar to this in the textbook and then just do more mm -hmm. of it. There's just really no okay. avoiding it. Because <laughs> yeah. like, if you if you see this right, and then it could definitely change. Like s small things can change. Mm -hmm. and, and then if the more you do it, then oh, okay. And then maybe like write notes to yourself and say, okay, do this, do that. But yeah, like I guess the system, the system is always like the general system of like attacking these ones. It mm -hmm. is just you you have that general chemical equation if you don't have to balance it, and then. Like wait, you have the general chemical equation. Yeah, if uh -huh. you don't have to ba if you don't have to balance it, then that's good. If it's balanced, like it's given to you, uh -huh. then then that's be that's better. You, you, the very first step is always balancing it. But if it's given to you, like life is good. But uh -huh. but if the the next step would be to always like figure out what equation to use, like what version of PV equals nRT. It's it's always like what what like how can I simplify this so that it's easy for me. Yeah, so here they're like, so I wrote balance for the first step and then for the second would be find the number of moles or like whichever part of the PBNRT you don't already have. Yeah, and then always know the relationship of Boyle's, Charles, and Avogadro. Because then those, like maybe know how to classify it. What always helps me is, like, you know, like looking at a problem, right? And, and then like, you're definitely like, what the heck problem? Like, how am I going to attack this? It, knowing how to classify it, like, is this a Boyle's problem? Is this a Charles problem? Is this like Avogadro? Or is this like something totally like general? Uh -huh. Well, and then it like, will allow you to like, oh, okay, I know the steps now. So like having like a step by step for like Boyle's, Charles, or Avogadro will, will like- I get that, but yeah. like this doesn't say that anything is staying constant. So like, I don't get how okay. those apply. So th this one, like if none of those apply, it would be the general PV NR NRT. That would be like type four, yeah. the oddball. So it would be the hardest one probably. This, this exact one? Yeah, because then there is no, you can't simplify it using Boyle's, Charles, or Avogadro. Yeah. The, the general one I'm, would mean like, you know, like the balance it, if it's not balanced, find the number of like moles, which is, this, this is doing that. And then this one has like an extra step. You, you have to convert it, right? This one, you have to convert something. This one? Yeah. It just says calculate the volume of methane. Yeah. Like it, that it, confuses it me too, because there was no methane in the first, in the reactants. And then it just, it uh, I see, I, I see like, what you're saying. Um, yeah, but then the thing is, it, it is there. Like, it doesn't matter if it's in the reactants or product. 
if it's at, like it could ask you, you know, whatever, you know, it has to be somewhere there. It has to be either a reactant or a product. But that's all uh-huh. I could say. <laughs> but it'll give you like all the other stuff, like a volume of a reactant one or reactant two or pro- product one, product two. But then knowing the chemical equation, it can ask you like what volume, what pressure, what temperature. You, you just have to like, yeah. That, but that I don't small. see how you know any of that. <laughs> like, okay. They tell you um, it's, they tell you it's 3.87 kilograms, but like that doesn't really tell me anything because I don't need to know the mass and yeah, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Um, so like, like the mass gives, is a part of that equation. Part of if the it gi- if it if it gives you yeah, you have a point. Like the one thing is the they always want to confuse you. Like I, I guess that's just like preamble. <laughs> like th- th- these things are always wanting to confuse you. <laughs> so like the the best way is um, breaking it down to like for example, you have this seven twenty six t tor whatever this is right. Mm-hmm. So, so you you obviously don't want to work with Tor, right? Like, okay, so convert. Yeah, so like breaking it down to something that you know how to do first. So that's the first thing I would do, convert everything to consistent units that you've been working with. And then the next thing would be, okay, how, how what's my next step here? So it's giving me like uh, a kilogram here. It's giving me a mass. Now, so for the most part, you don't want to be working with mass because it doesn't really help because it changes, right? Yeah. It changes just like, it's, it's like- I guess it helps you find the number of moles though. Yeah, but the always, the, the goal is if you have moles, that's gravy, you know? Like moles doesn't change across the, uh, you know, like there's a relationship, there's a relationship. But, but mass is always proportional. So you always, if you're given like the mass, mass, always convert it to moles. That, that's like a key thing. Like you okay. never, you never want to work with mass by itself. So always convert mass to moles. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll, that's why the moles is in the, um, you can always, you know, the, the end goal is like convert everything to moles, convert everything to consistent units, uh-huh. and then the ideal gas law. Uh-huh. The, they're looking like they're making sense now that I see like how to do them, but I feel like if that was given to me, I would just like draw a blank. <laughs> yeah, I, I got you. Um, yeah, the, the, that can be <laughs> resolved if, like, does this problem kind of resemble something from the textbook? We don't really read like the textbook. The textbook is just like, if you need, I don't, I actually haven't read it at all. So like, I don't know. Okay. But it doesn't, uh, It pro- I mean, I think it's just practice problems, but like yeah. we don't use it like, there's not like a corresponding page in the textbook to like what we're learning in class or anything. Yeah, I got you. I but I'm pretty sure like that this type of problem is like super general. Um, let me let me think. Are you um, just saying for practice? For practice, yeah, De- definitely. Yeah, I have a book of practice problems that I'll do. But yeah, definitely do that. But like okay. not just practice though. Like what always helps like in the end because I, I I've had that problem before where like how do how am I gonna attack this? What the hell problem is this? You know. It's always like, mm-hmm. what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah. So like my best, like the, what I what helped me was categor- categorizing it. You know, what group grouping everything to like something that, and when you group it, it's like you'll only know what type of problem that is. The, the mm-hmm. more you do it, like for example, this is type four because it doesn't give you like Boyle's, Charles, or Avogadro relationships, right? Mm-hmm. And then. The, and then, yeah, so you can do that. Type one, Boyle's, Charles, oh, type four. And then on top of that, maybe there's like a sub part. Say, oh, um, this has like a, a unit that I don't know. I've never seen before. So add that part, convert it. It's like checklist, you know, like before you attack mm-hmm. the problem. Because you don't want yeah. to be attacking it and then getting confused in the middle. Yeah. But like the system is always like find the moles and then use the, the ideal gas law. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Something else, like sometimes then there's like limiting reactants. Okay, let me see this one. What is the final, okay. What is the final volume of 10 liters of methane? It doesn't, it doesn't even explain it. Uh, 
reacts completely with failures of oxygen. Okay, methane as a reactant, and then just one to two, right? Uh huh. So, what is the final um, reaction completely with 20 liters of oxygen? So, what is the final volume if? Okay. It gives you the volume already, but then this one. What is the final volume if ten is a methane? Twenty liters of oxygen. I feel like this problem needs to be like defined more. I think you have to find the limiting reactants, and I just don't. The, how, how, how does uh, how did your professor do that? I don't like, know. Is it a full balance equation. What? Is this the full balance equation, or is like let me see? Let me, let me look yeah. this up. Okay. 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 What is the limiting reactant? How much excess reactant of after reaction is um, I see. Okay, I think that's what you do. Yeah. It's just not showing you, so showing you that. What you have to do is just like, um, you know how like you have the the balance equation, uh -huh. and it, and then you you technically just like with the you, you use the molar relationships. So yeah, you, you get like the the final like, like weight. Or like volume in this case. I don't know if that makes sense. It didn't. Really. <laughs> so like, for, yeah, for this one, like, here. Let, let, let me find one that makes sense. I'll, I'll show it to you. What What did your professor say about it though? First. It was a homework assignment. He didn't. Oh, he didn't explain it. No. Okay. Let's so it's not in like the, because when you're, when we're talking about limiting, like you, what you have to do is, here, let, let me, let me show it to you. Okay. Let me know if you see my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like, you see over here, like, um, it's just, you're just messing with the, the molar relationships. I don't know like, what that means. That doesn't really like tell the, me the, anything. So you know how you have a chemical equation, right? Uh-huh. And then these molar relate like you have one to two of these guys. Uh-huh. And then one of these, whatever this is, because it could be anything with the product. Yeah. One, that, that's the molar relationship. So okay. when, once you do that, you know, you, you always start with this number of moles of each reactant. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, see that this is the molar relationship, right? You have the mole of the magnesium and then the mole of this guy. Yeah. That, that's what you have to do for that problem, but it's not showing it to you, which sucks, because like, I would just like to confirm if uh, what we're doing is correct. But this is how I would typically do it. Um, you, you get like the moles of each reactant for, for the chemical re reaction that you have. Oh. And then you have this mole ratio. If you, if you see this one, to determine the reactant is limiting. What? So you, you know how like, by the mole ratio, which one is limiting? Yeah. And it, and I thought you calculate the number of moles that can be obtained from the limiting reactant. Wait, I can't like read. I... Can you read this? Yeah, but.
It's saying compare the mole ratio of the reactants with the ratio. Yeah, if I want to know like how your um, how your professor uh, like that that homework or whatever problem. Yeah, I don't know either though. So I. <laughs> Do do you have that problem? Like, can you can you show that to me? What? The 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 sample problem that for limiting reactants. That you we guys don't have. have a sample problem. Do you guys like how do so like um what problem do you guys have that's really related to this? The one we right. were just working on. To... It's just this one. Oh man. Um. I mean the one for my homework that we were just looking at. Okay. I would just say like, uh, it, it's probably not that big of a deal. Like, but the, cause like, I, I, I wouldn't be able to confirm if that's what you guys are doing, but this is the way I would do it though. Cause then, but it, after this, let me just read this one. Yeah, because once you have the mass, you, you have the mole ratio, everything is in moles, yeah. And then you have the mole ratio, convert it to mass, and then you can do the volume from the, from the equation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about this problem. If I, it seems like it's only one. And then like the, the way that like, the solution is defined. It's not really, it's not really clear how they, how they got that ten. Okay, we can do the next one then, because I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me let me let me show, show me what show me that one. Okay. Let me see. see. Okay. At least this one is being explained. So, but it's not the, gonna be explained before I do it. Like they're they only told yeah, me that because yeah. I got it right. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like you have to figure out the steps. The steps is pretty much the same. This one is like very similar. You, you have like the chemical equation, right? Uh huh. And then it tells you it's a standard temperature pressure. It gives yeah. you the volume. It gives you the volume. So, what does that tell you? Like, it gives you the volume. You're and just the finding the number of moles. Yeah. And then this one, this one is actually a specific one. So this is probably like a type five. Um, Cause they, you know how you, they got this one mole of CO2 and then 22.4 liter CO2 that's STP. Yeah. That, that's a specific problem. That's like, I don't. So, uh, so what, what that means is like, uh, if you have STP, you can assume that one, that, that one mole of like, of a, of a CO2 at standard pressure time is like at 22.4. That, that's like type five. You just have to know that one. Yeah. I, I, I knew that one. I just, I knew to write that down. So uh. if it tells you STP, you can assume like one mole of that molecule equals 22.4 volume or a liter. But they already gave us a different um, volume, so I'm confused. Okay, that that's actually it. Make, it makes sense, like they because then um, you have to find the the moles. That's that's why you have that relationship for STP, STP problems. Uh, like once you know it's STP, then you know that you're converting some type of volume to moles. Does it make sense? How did you know that? Because it's a, uh, you have this mole and the thing is that STP gives you this molecular volume relationship. And then you have to use that somehow because it's a STP. Uh -huh. So you just go from liters to moles and then moles yep. to, like, I don't get how they got from moles of CO2. Oh, and then they use the molar, the um, equation for the molar ratio. Okay, so so you have to go back and and say like what what is this asking you? How many moles of uh, sodium nitrate NaCl are also formed? So like that. I think I know. think I could have done this one. You could have done the bottom one. 
Yeah, I think this one would be okay. Yeah, the one on one is easy. The, the, the concept on this one is like, do you know this relationship? The one mole of like a molecule equals 22.4 liter. That's like the yeah. key here. Yeah. And then this is like a type five. You can probably add this like, oh, every time there's a, it says STP, it gives you like a stupid volume. Then I can apply this equation to get like a mole. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it's asking you, right? Once you have the mole of CO2, like you have that on the right hand side. And, and then so you just have one mole of that, how many of that reacts with NaCl? Um, it says two, two NaCl and then one CO2. So using your, you know, whatever you're given, all right, whatever you found out, you have number of moles of CO2 from the given volume. And you were able to find the, the moles of CO2 from the given volume and, it, and this STP relationship. Mm-hmm. Then you use this, uh, the chemical, you know, the product one to product two, there's two of product one equals one of product two, two, and then you times that by the moles. And it's asking you that, how many moles of, of NaCl, right? Yeah. So it's really just like, what, what, what do you have, right? What do you have? And then what, the hardest part is probably like, it doesn't tell you what to assume. Like the hardest part is like, how do you know one mole CO2 equals 22.4 liter, right? That's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. I think there's more of that problem. I've, I've seen that before, like a lot of times. This one, just the way it's written is like, I don't know. I, I don't uh, know where I, I hate, it. there's too many of the, yeah, okay, let me see. Um, first write the balance. Does it not give you, okay, it doesn't give you the balance, okay. I don't even know what the equation would be, like not even the balancing part, just like we've never had to do that before. Hopefully you don't have to. Um, so what, what I would do is, cause like when you're trying to balance something, let me see, I'll probably just look it up. I, you could technically look it up or you know, that's, a, that's the easiest way of doing it. Cause it gives you the, the molecules there, the compounds, you know, it gives you the compounds. And then, so when you have that N A N three, right? You don't know what the, what the mole is. So that, that's one way, you know that, um, does it tell you that it's a reactant? Um, which during a collision it like does but it doesn't say it directly like i don't know i don't okay so it does tell you actually the first sentence tells you because it tells you that like sodium acid or whatever acid um nan3 okay that that it decomposes so that that's the reaction it decomposes Uh uh-huh so you know that obviously NaN3 is going to be... So you know that NaN3? Yeah, that, that's how you know it. Okay. But then you, the one thing you don't know here is the, how do you arrange the equation? Mm-hmm. This one's an easy one. It could, it could get complicated. <laughs> but, but like, because it gives you like nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas, so what the heck is that? But that has to be N2, right? And then sodium metal. Mm-hmm. That's just Na, yeah. But okay. so you have that, but then you don't have the mole. So I would just balance it. Like you, what I would do is put like, eh, eh, okay. like um, you know, you know how to balance, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you had uh, for this one. You, it's definitely going to test you if you have the right balance equation. But that's just what I'm saying. Yeah. But do you know how to do that? How to balance it? Yeah. Okay. So si- since we have that already, that, and then the next step would be, mm, let me think, let me think. Uh, cal- so I got, uh, it says calculate the mass of sodium, NaN3 required to generate enough nitrogen gas. Uh, to fill um, and blah blah blah. Okay, so yeah, this that stuff I just I don't know. Okay, so once you have the balance equation, uh, I would definitely just like skip to like what what the heck it's asking you, which is like calculate the mass of sodium, right? Like so, you, it's wanting you to do like the mass of NaN three, right? Mm-hmm. And then, but then, what do you have to figure that out? 
like it's always going to be a relationship between two things like you have you have this reactant and an a and three and then mm-hmm. it's it's wanting you to to relate that to the n2 right that nitrogen gas mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Not, not the sodium to generate it, enough yeah so not that much that, that much you know like at least you have like na n3 and an n2 so you can those two you can focus your mind on at least like you have like na n3 and an n2 so that that's like just thinking yeah. about that process like Okay, so I know I'm going to be working with the NA N3 and I'll be working with N2. So you can put that aside, but then now, what was it? You have to get what? The number of moles, right? Okay. Or like convert, yeah. every, convert everything to consistent units. Also, the other thing I forgot about that. Um, you, you want to convert temperature to like absolute. You already yeah, know that. I know that. Yeah. yeah okay. So convert that, everything to consistent units, and then find the number of moles. It, it's just hard because like the, it's saying that in the answer, but it didn't say that in the question. So I wouldn't know to do that. Yeah. How you would know how to do that is like, so like you have a lot of givens, right? I would probably just write down the givens that you have. Yeah. Right? So you, you're given like, I think it gives you this one, right? 1.04 to pressure ATM. Yeah. It gives you pressure, volume, temperature. Yeah. And it gives you a volume, yeah. 57 liter. And then. It also gives you the R, right? The gas constant. Or like, you know that one. You know that one. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you, yeah. It won't give you that one, but <laughs> it's already given. Yeah. And, and then the temperature, it gives that to you, right? Mm-hmm. So you have, there's always five, there's five parts to this. And that's how you so know. So yeah, then I could do like PVNRT and find the number of moles, but then it, what did it asking for? Okay, like the mass of... Like, so once you have the moles, you just convert, uh, you just turn that into the mass of nitrogen. You, you got it, yeah. There you go. You actually answered the question. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah. I mean, it's confusing me how they have like all those numbers. Like, I don't get where they got them all from. Yeah. That, so, another thing with that one D- um, there's a lot of words, a lot of crap in the question. Like, I, I would like simplify it by writing out the givens. And then once you have the givens, like you know exactly yeah. what you're going to be using. What you have, yeah. You, you know exactly you're going to be using, like you know, yeah. gas law. You just have to look for which one you don't have, and then that's how you use it. But then mm-hmm. everything has to be in moles. So then that's you would you, do. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't know the step in between. What? The steps in between. Like they went from the moles of N two. And they multiplied it by the mole ratio from the balance equation. Okay. And then. Why, why would you do that? Why'd they go from that to, oh, they went straight from that to the grams. You, um, they didn't really like what, what you could do here is like, you know how like you have moles, right? You, you figured out the moles from the ideal gas law, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then what it wants you to do is that it wants you to do the mass. So this, uh, so, but then you have a relationship. So you're using between, molar mass, right? Yeah, you're using molar mass, yeah. Like this 70, 65 grams is the molar mass of NaN3. Oh, shit. That, 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 one, that one right there is, is something that you, you so this, this is like type six. I mean, there's like so many different ways like you can ask this problem. But like that last part where when you're converting moles of N2 into mass of like sodium, you have to know how to do that, is what I'm saying. And then this is how you do it. It's just pretty much a conversion problem. Wait, like, so you, so you, should, you I'm you confused should. also, like, because then it says the mass of sodium azide or whatever. The mass of sodium is, is which one? For everyone. Oh, yeah. And then um, you know how, like, how do you know you have to apply this last bit of the equation? This, do you know how, why they did it this way? Oh, these ones confuse me too. With the root mean square speed. Oh, this is... 
This one is just an is. I thought this was just an equation. Is, uh, isn't this just an equation? Yeah, but I don't know. Like it didn't okay. give you anything. Is the equi the equation that was is um? Previous question. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. What? So like for these ones, um, uh, this root mean square speed, just apply the equation. Mm -hmm. The hardest part here is like the, ma the molecular weight. Is the molecular weight? Yeah, yeah. R, R is given to you. Like yeah. you. You know that one. It's just mm -hmm. a different form. And T they gave you. Yeah, which is easy. So it's the molecular weight that's the hardest part. Is that not just molar mass? The, the, reason, the reason why is like, um, you, you have to get it to a form, like a different form. It's, it's not just like grams per mole, it's kilograms per mole. I don't, I don't know if you, you got that one. So, so, so like, you know how like, it's, you're usually using grams per mole? Yeah. But because, you, because you're using- Oh, it's like the other, oh. Because you're using okay. joules to say. Using joules? Yeah. Oh. Oh, so it's not the regular R. It's, yeah, it's not the regular R, but then in this case, you have, you have to be using kilograms because you're using joule. It's, it's so just for, like, for this type of problem, they yeah. didn't say like that it's in joules or that it's in kilograms. So is it just always going to be like that? And I should assume that? For, for this uh, VRMS? Yeah. For VRMS, uh, report your answer in meters per second. To the, yeah, VRMS, just use your R like this. Th this is the R for VRMS, yeah. Which one? 8.314? Yeah, th this one right here. I don't see what you're, yeah. So yeah, R is 8.314. But, but, but the, the hardest part here is like knowing what unit of molecular weight to use. And how do you know? I, I don't because you're using Joule, like it's, it's just the thing, when, every time you're using Joule, you have to be using like not grams. Okay, so what it's do you It's gonna be kil kilograms. It, it's a, it's how do you get the kilograms? And you get the kilograms by just um, converting grams to kilograms. Oh. Um, but yeah, okay. it, I, can't, I can't say anything more, I guess. Like, it, it's just like one of those things like, oh, why the heck do you have, why do you convert it? Because it's, you're using Joule. It's just accepted practice. So it should be three. Yeah, but it only applies in this case though. Every time you see Joule, you have to convert your molecular mass to kilograms per mole. Wait, it's only in this case, but it didn't say joule. It didn't say joule, but then because you're using VRMS, like this. Oh, um, so yeah, so every t you said it's just for this case. It's just uh, it's just for this case. Uh, when you do when What's you're finding. What's this case? Do you mean every time you use VMS, VRMS? VR yeah, when it's asking for your speed, or your root mean square speed. Uh huh. This is the thought process. Um, when you see a root mean squared, or whatever, like VRMS. You need to use R, uh -huh. 8.314, you know, like that version of R. And because that version of R is in joules, um, joule, joules is very related, very much related to like kilograms. Mm -hmm. You can convert it to like kilograms, meters square, a meter over a second, whatever, or kilograms, meter. Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, because of that, uh, you need to convert all molecular weights to kilograms but that's like a thought process okay and that's like the hardest part it sucks that like yeah you have to like you know know that part <laughs> mm -hmm. okay um and then there's yeah this kind The partial pressure ones confuse me. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Uh, let me see. These are the partial pressure ones. 
Uh, let me see, 0.5, find the mole fraction. And partial pressures are calculated from total pressure variable mole fractions. And does it does it give you guys like a, a like you you know during your lecture the does it does your professor give you guys like an equation for partial pressure? Yeah. Is that, okay. What is it usually? Is it, isn't it just like n and a bunch of like RT over V or something like that? No. Okay. Um, it's supposed to. It's like it would be like the partial. Like we did this one. Wait, do we, is this the same one? I don't know. Um, okay. Oh, but we did, it would be like the. Mm, I can't hear you. What happened? It's the the pressure. Sorry, the partial pressure is equal to the pressure total times the mole fraction. Partial pressure e equals what? The total pressure times the mole fraction. The mole, okay, the mole fraction. Th that's the partial pressure? Yeah, and the mole fraction is like oh, I moles see, I see, I see of one saying. element to the total moles. Th that is what it is here. I, I got it, the, the X. The X is your yeah. uh, mole fraction. Usually, like, a lot of people use Y or X, mass fraction, mole fraction. Um, yeah. But in this case, I will, that's why I wanted to know what, what was the equation. Okay. That makes sense. Um, then you, you would just find, so the end goal here is to, to get to that equation, you know, to, to get to that, like, partial pressure equals total pressure times the mass fraction. And then you just have to, like, kind of, like, navigate your way to get... I think the hardest part is like, does it give you, yeah, it gives you total pressure usually. It's just getting the mass fraction. I don't, I don't see myself understanding this one at all. Okay. Like. Uh, this is probably like one of the harder ones. So you're totally fine. Like if you're, um, when, when, when is your, when, when is your quiz? It's tomorrow? Tomorrow at eight. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm willing to, this, this one isn't that bad. Um, what, what you should do like all the other ones aren't you know like i mean this one some people they get it but the others don't but it's just pretty much like you just have to apply that equation but the now that you know like what that equation is i guess my question is do you know how to get like the the molar mass no okay so the the molar i don't mass, know how to i really don't know how to do this like any part of it Okay, so f let's go with like what's given first, right? So um, you're given like a mixture of oxygen. It always gives you a mixture because that's the only time you, you apply it. Yeah. And so you have a mixture of oxygen and a 92.3% mass of oxygen. So that's kind of, so you, you use that percentage, right? Somewhere. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. And does it give you anything else? Let me see. 750, so, 750. So, but that's like, that's like at the end, which doesn't really help us. Uh, we we want to find the big X, like the, the big X, the molar mass, like fraction, or molar, uh, the mole fraction. Mm -hmm. um, like how you get that is it's always like, it, it's like a fra it's like a ratio of like the mixture itself. Like, you know, the mole, like the, the, ma the mole fraction of that mixture is the the ma the moles of that of that molecule over the total moles, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense first? Yeah, but they don't give you that. How do you know how many moles there are of anything? You see, uh, you you probably if they don't give that to you, uh, you, you probably have to like let me see uh, helium helium oxygen oxygen. One mole of helium. All right, so you have to. Okay, I see. Um, if it, if they don't give you the equation, because they they could give you the equation, which uh, which would be easy, but they yeah. chose they chose not to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> it, 
you just have to, that's why it's, um, for these types of problems, I guess this is like sub, sub of, you know, if they don't give it to you, I guess we, got, we didn't really start uh, like partial pr pressures yet. So I guess mm -hmm. like one mindset, cause like, there's probably like a variation to this problem. Like one way of thinking it is uh, you have to assume something. So that, that's like the first step is you, you need to assume it could be like a thousand grams or it could be like one kilogram. It doesn't really matter. This 100 grams doesn't, is very arbitrary. But it affects the problem. Um, not really, as long as you're consistent. Oh, okay. It, it, as long as you're consistent with like, I would probably just, yeah, they're smart in assuming like, cause like we're using like percentages, right? I would probably just assume the same thing cause like they're using percentages, anything like 100, 100 grams, 100 kilograms, something like that. So I would probably just assume like, 100 grams for you know for the sake that they give it to you and so this gas so like for example um you want to know how much oxygen you have right you, you can either assume like the gas which is the helium or you can assume the oxygen or like you can assume the gas the, the mixture of gas or you, you you can assume the um, and then from that total total mass uh it gives it to you you're given like a percentage of it, right? So from that, you can, you can get one of them at least. So that's why it's giving it to you, right? 100 grams times that by like the, that's the mixture. 100 grams is the mixture. And then from that mixture, you have to get the oxygen and the helium, right? That's like the yeah. mindset. So what do you have though? Like, so you have a mixture of 100 grams of gas. And then you're given 92.3% of it is oxygen. That's given to you. So that's why that first step makes sense. And hopefully it doesn't like, there's a lot of ways you can you know, ask this question, but um, like that's the, the first step is, okay, you have 100 grams of gas and then you, you, you get like the, the, the mass of the oxygen, but then like know, knowing that, that you don't want to work with like masses, you, you always want to convert it to moles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the pre-step here is like, I don't really know what's given to me. It doesn't give me a unit. It does give me a percentage. So every, I guess like forming that solution, like, you know, set is you, you have, you have to assume something. And from your assumption, you can get like the mass. Of one of them. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't know. I don't. I can't like process this anymore tonight. I've <laughs> been staring at this stuff for too long, and I need to be done. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty. How many more problems are there? Anyways. It's. I don't know. There's Is a lot. There's like twenty. Holy. Yeah. But I know how to do most of the ones at the bottom. Okay. What? Because like you were asking about like the partial pressures, right? You, this is like the one that you're kind of like. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. It'll probably be one question on the test and I'm really okay with missing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. It's really like, if you look at this, this is another one. Um, I think it doesn't, it give it, it, it doesn't give it to you. Uh, the mole fraction of O2 is 0.33. It doesn't give it to you. But it does give you like the mass, I think. If you follow the same amount of steps. Okay. So you're good then. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Oh, well. Let let me let me know uh, if you need more, cause like the. I think for, you know, uh, a lot of my clients, I, I always like say like, there's always a follow up. <laughs> and then like, for, for this one, uh, I'm hoping that you, you, you get a good grade on your quiz. That, Thank I, you. Yeah, but you, do, you did understand most of the stuff we talked about. I know it was like a little, it, it was like a lot of stuff in a sense. It's like, but the one thing is just the, the I think I'll repeat it again, it's just the system. Like, 
like a lot of these problems they, they become really easy once you get like the different systems because mm -hmm. like uh you know the, the more the more you like categorize them the better it is like knowing like how to attack it because you can't just say okay it's all partial pressures right you can't just say that like there, there must yeah. be and then gas stoichiometry there's different ways of asking that question mm -hmm. and like uh i know I, I think i'm good i'm good thank you you're good okay good okay thank you have a good night thank you you too